Hey, welcome to another edition. Postcard from Moorhead, and this time it is a travel edition. I'm here today with my son-in-law, David Scrivener. Say hi, David. Hi, David. <laughs> we are doing a seafood boil. boil. Kentucky style. Kentucky style. I did a, a somewhat of a version of this earlier. Man, it is nothing like he has put together today. David, what goes into your seafood boil? Well, we got a little bit of everything. You got to have some vegetables, and you also got to have some uh, some uh, uh, seafood, and we're also going to put in some uh, sausage, some kielbasa sausage. Uh, we got some shrimp, and we also have some uh, crawfish, some new potatoes, red potatoes, uh, corn on the cob. And I also like some sweet peppers. And we're also going to put in some, uh, we're going to do some hard-boiled eggs. What does that do? Ah, uh, if you like eggs. I lo everyone loves eggs, so why not? Okay. Eggs make everything better. I want to... Now, these are pre-cooked, so it won't take long to basically heat them back up. But hopefully, uh, they'll have some of the flavor that we're going to put into ours. So that's what we're hoping for. Okay, what kind of seasoning do you use? Oh man, we got the whole cabinet. We got uh, we got garlic, minced garlic, uh, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, Old Bay, some zatarins. Uh, got a little bit of accent. Uh, we also got some uh, Tonys, uh, onion powder, Cajun seasoning. Should have some lemon pepper and a little bit of ground paprika with uh, also some butter. And onion. And we're also going to put an onion in, too, just to make everything happy. Now, you've got the little red potatoes. Yep. And then you've got these little, what are these? I think they're Yukon Golds. They call them, what, the, the Boomer Gold or whatever, but they're basically the same. I to mean, me, a potato's a potato's a potato, so. I have to disagree. Oh, okay, well. In the shrimp, in, in the in this boil doesn't make much difference. Mm -hmm. But the Yukon Gold yeah. is the most worthless potato what? I've ever encountered in my life. It's not even a good doorstop. Wow, you're really against that potato. I, I love a good I potato. I like the little red okay. ones. Well, love those. You can pick those out and eat those then. Oh, well, I'll eat them all. Don't okay. worry all right. about it. <laughs> all right. So, how long does this take? Normally, start to finish, probably about 25, 30 minutes. Once you get, you know, your water up and running and boiling and all that and all your seasons going. So, it doesn't take too long, really. Okay. Uh, we're going to bring it up to a bowl. And uh, then we're going to start putting stuff in it. We could go ahead and put our ingredients in, or, yeah, our ingredients in now if you want. Okay. i got a question for you. Uh -huh. Have you ever done this and add beer to it? Uh, depends on who's watching. Uh, the reason I ask, Lenore, a lot of stuff she makes, especially the chili that she makes, oh, yeah, yeah. she puts beer in it. Yeah. All the alcohol evaporates out. Right, but, it's just the flavor. But it sure does add the flavor. Right. So Every once in a while, yeah, yeah, I'll put some in it, uh, depending on who's eating. Uh, you know, if the, if the children are coming over or whatever. No, uh, no. But, I mean, hey, for the most part, yeah. I think I might have one or two available. Uh, Okay, so do you put the seasoning in first? You can, yeah. Well, let's go ahead and put those in. Okay. Uh, there's not really a measuring. It's what you feel. Well, and I've always heard that uh, if you're not sneezing, it's not seasoned. So, <laughs> I've all right. never heard that. Yeah. All right. What are we going to start with? Um, first, let's do a little bit of a uh, little bit of garlic, a little minced garlic. Just going to pour a little bit of. That's a little bit. Yeah, it's a little. Well, you got to you got to remember we got a big pot. Okay. So then we're also going to do the garlic powder. Well, and I think we're going to do this in two stages too. We're going to do our vegetables and stuff first. Okay. And then once we're we're going to pull those out, put them in a the cooler. Then we're going to do all of our meat. Okay. Like I said, the one that I did, not near as good as this one. What's that? A little cayenne pepper, just to kick it up. Then we're going to have a little accent flavor enhancer. Mm. And that's all it does. About that little... much. <laughs> Looks good to me. We'll go that route. You know, most of the videos I do, all of my, all of my measurements are, that looks about right. 
Now that's good stuff. It's a little old bay seasoning. Oh, well, if it's good, we're gonna put more in it then. So then you always got to throw in a little uh, a little crab boil in a bag. Okay. It's got all kinds of different seasonings and flavors in it. We'll toss that in. And we're gonna use a complete stick of butter on this. I love butter. I love butter. Butter is better. Butter is better. So try to get all the paper off. That's my tip. Tip of the day. Get tip the paper of the day. off. Now we're also gonna do a little bit of uh, concentrated shrimp and crab bowl. I've never used that. Oh. I assume that to smell, not drink. I hope. Oh, all of it. Oh, yeah. Well, I can see where the video I did on my seafood boil has come up severely short after looking at this. A little paprika. Oh, yeah. A little bit of flavor, a little bit of color. And also going to do a little bit of lemon pepper. Because mm. you need a little bit of the little acid part onto it also, you know. Okay. Next is some onion powder. All right. And got to have a little bit of Cajun seasoning. I don't know why, but. Because it's good. It just makes it better. Then, of course, we're going to do a little bit of Tony's Creole seasoning. I like that. Oh, yeah. Now, so what got you into doing this seafood shrimp crawdad boil? Uh, a long time ago when I was in school in Nashville, I was in there with a buddy and he was from Mississippi. And one weekend I went home with him. And when we got there, uh, his family had made one. And they, when it was all done, they laid it out on a big picnic on the, on, on the newspaper. And we sat there all night and ate. And it was delicious. So ever since then, I've been trying to make it that same taste and that same flavor. So um, I've got close, but I still haven't found one like it. Seems like, you know, like whenever you go to an area that does it, that's, that's the best place. So that's what well, I'm trying to figure out. I need oh, an assistant. You need an assistant? What do you need? Can you put the eggs in whenever I hold it up? That way we don't crack any on the way down. Which color do you want first? You want the white ones or brown ones? Doesn't matter to me. All right. Okay, that's nah. a, that is one dozen hen berries. <laughs> so it hasn't started to boil yet. Uh, does that matter? Not really, no. Uh, we can actually, we can check our temperature just to make sure, but I mean, you can see it's starting to come up uh, and it feels, mm -hmm. it feels warm. Yeah, I can so, feel the heat coming <laughs> off of it. Why, why do you do the meat separate from the vegetables? Um, I guess it depends on how much you're actually doing. Um, since we're going to be doing a lot of vegetables and stuff this time, um, we're going to do those first. Okay. And then also some purists or whatever, they say that you shouldn't actually mix the vegetables and the meat because it uh, takes away from the flavor or whatever. So I figured we'd try it this way because we got, you know, a couple people here today and we're gonna. Yeah, we have a, also, we have a live audience today. Live audience. Yay. Yay. All right. So, all right, so we're gonna wait for this to start boiling and then we're gonna start throwing stuff in it. Oh, look at that. Well, he took my advice. We're gonna put some spice. Yeah, that's a good year. Let's do it. It has come to a rolling boil. We are adding the vegetables. Got the peppers, the potatoes, the onion, more potatoes. All right, we've got the vegetables in there. How long does this part take? Once it comes back up to a rolling boil, we're gonna to count to about five minutes, five to 10 minutes, uh, depending on what they look like. We'll make an executive decision. Then we'll pull them out and put our meat in. All right, where's the corn? Uh, we're gonna wait on the corn because uh, Someone very specific likes her corn a certain way, and we're gonna wait till the end and put our corn in then. Now, uh, everything's done, uh, done to taste. We have taste tested a couple items. 
Oh, the audience is already The audience tasty. is, yeah, we've had audience participation. All right. So uh, I think we're ready to pull stuff out now and put it into our cooler and go on to step two. Oh, okay. Let it drain a little bit, a little swirly, swirly. Okay, I think we're clear. We've got right. a couple little things of onion left in there, but that's all quite right. all right. So now we need to put all of our meat in here. So we're going to start with the shrimp. Already mm -hmm. shelled. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna do a little bit of crawfish. And then we're gonna go with a little bit of kielbasa. Now we're gonna put that in and bring it all back up to a rolling ball. Okay. Wait for about five to 10 minutes. Then we're gonna add our corn. Are we ready for Jody's corn? We're ready for the Jody corn. Uh, Jody we're, corn. We're about four or five minutes out from these being done. So we need to go ahead and put these. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Keith. We need to put these in. That way they're not overdone. Is it good? It's good, and then it sh shot a sh Whoa. It made what? a shiver down my spine when I realized what I was eating. What's the verdict, people? Oh Delicious. Mm. Hey, and somebody's birthday today? Yay. All right.